What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Got another how-to today. Been blazing through the how-tos as fast as possible for you guys. Um, this one is how to powder coat a set of wheel faces for multi-piece wheels. Uh, this is, happens to be a set of three-piece wheels, but two-piece, three-piece, as long as the face comes out, it's all the same. I actually did delete the footage on accident of before I put these in the strip tank. Um, they were powder coated prior actually by me about two or three years ago. So we're going to start with them already going through the strip tank, already being rinsed, all that shenanigans and go from there. But it's going to be the same no matter what. That deleted footage shouldn't matter too much. Um, just means that you guys aren't going to see the chemical stripping process, which you've already seen a couple times if you watch anything on this channel. So I apologize for the deleted footage and I guess let's get going. One thing I should point out, if you notice behind me, there is a bunch of stuff off of the wheel racks that are here. We actually had an earthquake the day that this was being filmed initially. Um, pretty good size earthquake, about 7 in the morning. It was, a, I think, a 5.7 uh, magnitude earthquake. So not fun, but uh, seemingly everything's fine now. We're still getting little aftershocks and so on. But um, I think I'm actually going to have a clip in this of one of the aftershocks of just the one of the camera or the security cameras that's in the showroom. So um, yeah, let's get started. Now that we got these uh, faces out of the stripper, um, you can actually see there is still a profile on them. Like I said before, these have been powder coated previously and they were sandblasted ahead of time. We're going to go through sandblast them all now, clean them up, get them in the uh, oven for outgassing. Um, after they're out and cooled, we'll get them into masking. Alright guys, so I'm going to preface this video by saying we've had earthquakes this morning. We had one and then a big aftershock. Um, so if you see the camera shaking, <laughs> that's what's going on. And I am 100% the person that would leave that type of video in. So just for the clout, you know what I'm saying? Just for the clout. So got these faces all blasted. Um, Gonna mask off the back mounting pad. Gonna mask off this flange. Not gonna do this flange. Uh, we'll get to that in just a minute here. Um, these faces are going a color called Speedway Black, which ironically, not black at all. Uh, not even a little bit. I have no idea why it's actually called that. I mean, it's, a, it's like a gunmetal gray color. I think what it actually is, is it has a black base and a lot of silver type flake in it. And that flake is what makes it look gunmetal overall. Cause I mean, you'll see, it's definitely for sure not black. Uh, they have another color very similar to it called Speedway Gray. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit lighter. So like I said, it's, that's probably a, a gray base ultimately. So we'll get this uh, back mounting pad taped up, nice and protected, and then go around and do the bore flange real quick. I'm acting like I don't know where things are right now. Loki, think that this, uh, this earthquake like trolled me today. Let's see. Got your basic squeegee, of course knock all the or press all the tape down it's really important that you do that especially if you've sandblasted 
the area that you're taping. Um, on a machine surface, you can usually get away with it just fine, just putting the tape down with your hand, no big deal. Uh, I always go over it with a squeegee no matter what, but on blasted surfaces, you basically have to, because if you don't, when you heat this up, it just pulls off. You might be able to see it on camera, I don't know how the angle is, honestly. I can't see it from that perspective, but it makes like a dark line in it when you press over top of it with a squeegee, and that's how you know that it's actually down and sticking, so. Just a little pro tip. All right, back mounting pad handled. Next up is to find tape. Um, remember there's all different sizes and thicknesses of tape. Um, you wanna find a tape that's really close to your flange size. Um, you don't, no, I mean, you don't want it to be smaller, but you definitely don't want it to be bigger by enough that it can fold over, unless you want to sit and trim it all. That's obviously another option. Um, so you take this, put it right here. You see that it's the same height. Works perfect. Get the edge of this tape. There we go. Oh, and I had somebody in one of the videos ask me what I've been setting wheels and faces and stuff on. This is actually just two of the like two inch tape rolls, like the leftover plastic piece that you get after using tape, taped together to keep it high. Um, works really well, it's easy to spin on. I'm sure that there are other way better, cooler, and probably theoretically more expensive uh, tools to do exactly this, but this one, I needed something in a pinch, I don't know, a few weeks back, and this thing worked out beautifully for me, so. I guess if you have extra rolls of tape, you can use uh, use them for that. Or extra rolls from your tape, I should say. All right, so now we got that flange done. I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna explain to you why I'm not gonna tape off this flange. Um, there's a lot of powder coaters that do. I will do it on request. So if I have a, a client who wants that, I will absolutely do that per request, no question. Uh, I'm not gonna do it this time because, well, the customer didn't request it, for one. But I actually don't believe that you should um, tape that area off. And let me explain why. The, now that you've sandblasted this material, it's incredibly porous, okay? So you're gonna have a bunch of open, you know, aluminum pores, basically. And what that means is when we if you get moisture on this aluminum, you'll notice that it corrodes significantly faster than if you get moisture on, you know, like a non-blasted piece of aluminum, just bare aluminum. Um, and that's because you've made the, the surface of it porous. Now, I'm running, you know, I've told you guys in previous videos, uh, these are eight millimeter bolts, just from my local bolt, bolt nut supply place. Um, get them super cheap. I think this whole bag of bolts, I think everything that I bought that day, I mean, I bought like a whole bag of stuff and I think it was like $10. <laughs> so, and that was with, I bought, uh, oh no, it was, it was $18. I actually remember now, it was $18 and I had bought all the stuff that I hang wheels from and another thing at eight millimeter bolts. And I bought these cause I wasn't sure how many clean ones of these I had. And I would, didn't think that I wanted to put them in the stripper and strip down all my other ones. So, I'm going to finish screwing all these in. Um, the other useful thing, oh, and I guess one of the things I should get to is the reason that I prefer to powder coat this flange is, you know, to stop corrosion. And I have enough confidence in my abilities to powder coat it, know that I get it even, um, et cetera, et cetera. There are people that tape it, that's fine. Um, I've even vacuumed these off before. Just use tool for the end of the vacuum that I made. Uh, you can buy most of this stuff just at any um, hardware store. And you can just vacuum off that flange if you're really that concerned with it. Um, block off all the threads, obviously. Even if you're gonna vacuum it, I will tend to block off the threads no matter what. It does make it a little harder to vacuum, but Sometimes you can't vacuum out of the threads super effectively, or it's way too time consuming maybe is the best way of saying that. So this is a great option.
Yeah, and I wasn't trying to be weird about the whole earthquake thing today. Um, I've never been in an earthquake here in Utah. I've been in them um, in Seattle before. But it's definitely a crappy experience. You know, we had this one was pretty early this morning. It was like 7 o'clock this morning. Just after 7, I was, of course, already working. But my dogs came running in. You guys have seen probably the dogs in the videos. My dogs came running in, and uh, I didn't know what was going on. And then as soon as I said something to them, thought it was weird that they came running in, the earthquake started happening. So um, it didn't last too terribly long. I have some footage on my cameras I noticed that I'm going to be able to pull. And then uh, we've only had one. And we've had a bunch of little tiny aftershocks. But we had another one that was like 4.7. magnitude which if you know earthquakes at all you know that it's not huge but it's pretty big <laughs> nothing that anybody wants to go through most of the time okay so these have been uh, outgassed they're all taped off um, bolts are all put in all the threads this thing is basically ready to spray I'm gonna hang it up and finish taping up the rest of these as sorry to interrupt this video um, just a reminder to hit that like and subscribe button. If you turn the notification bell on, you'll get a heads up every time we post a new video. We'll let you get back to it. All right, got this thing all hung up, bolts in all the threaded holes, taped off all the areas I wanted taped. Gonna throw some powder at it. So again, this is um, Speedway Black. With the KV set to, I don't know, 65, 70, somewhere in that range. And as you can see, this color doesn't even come out black. I'm not, like I said, I have no idea why it's called. Speedway Black makes zero sense to me. All right, got these things all done, fresh out of the oven. I'm gonna pull the tape off of them while it's still warm. Definitely something I recommend. I see some debate about whether or not you should pull the tape while it's still warm. I've never waited till it cools down. Uh, I feel like most of the tapes get kind of brittle at that point, and I don't wanna have to sit and pick away. And we've all done the thing where we have to pull off old stickers off of a toolbox or a car and that's the worst it takes forever you sit and pick away at it you do this it stays nice and it's nice and warm easy to get off um, you don't have to go through and find the seam in the tape that you created what i usually do is just cut a single line into it where you can and then just yank it off like that i'm gonna go through and pull all these bolts out while they're still sort of warm We'll uh, be good to go. And there we have it. Speedway Black Metallic. So it's an absolutely gorgeous color. I have no idea why it's called black, but it's a great color. Got these faces all wrapped up. Sounds like the customer's on his way to pick them up right now. All right, that wraps up another how-to video, uh, how to do wheel faces for two and three-piece wheels. Uh, if you guys got any how-to ideas, uh, simple, complicated, doesn't really matter, uh, leave it down in the comments. I'll see if I can get to them. As always, thanks for watching the video, and see you next time. What's up, everybody? Just wanted to say thanks for watching the video. So a couple more videos right here in case you're bored. Uh, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know every time we post a new video.